I grew up in a capital scarce environment. Yes. Not from a business family. Father was a doctor in the government. Yeah. So it's not as if we were in the So we became fundamentally, naturally frugal and capital efficient. Because there was no other way. Yes. When I met Dipinder Goel for the first time, there were three or four restaurant listing sites. But yes. Zomato was then called Foodie Bay. Foodie Bay was the only one with all the menu cards. And I found that very useful. You know, when I spoke to Rakit Junjunwala, and he said, Sanjeev, may I have to You know, if you find a good company, you hold it forever. We wanted to go public. Because it was a dream. It was a dream that we public company a big company. Banenge. We will be independent and we will be world class and world scale out of India. I have today on the Neon Show the entrepreneur who I have looked up to all my life. I consider him the Dronacharya of Indian startup ecosystem. This man has never shied away from expressing himself freely. His company was the first tech company in India to go public. He inspired a generation of entrepreneurs after him who took their companies public in India, like Deep Kalra of Make My Trip, Dipinder Goel of Zomato, and Yashish Dhaya from Policy Bazaar. All entrepreneurs dream of taking their company public at some point in time, and the very few ones who are able to reach that milestone remain busy managing that company or end up taking retirement. But this man has never rested. He is responsible for the many startups in India that have gone public. Today, I have with me Padam Shri Awadi Sanjeev Pichandani, sir. This episode is about the unconventional choices of Sanjeev, sir, his life and his philosophy of making India great. I would like to thank our sponsors, Prime Venture Partners, for sponsoring this episode of Neon Show. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the podcast, sir. Thank you for calling me. So it's, it's a pleasure, right? And you are a person I look up to. I in 2008, I was Professor Sanjay Verma ke under internship in Mandabad. At that point of time, they hosted an entrepreneur conference in 2008. So you were one of the speakers. So I remember that. Record. I remember the conference. Uh, I, I asked you a question there. So I don't remember. I don't remember. What question did you ask? I asked you, what to exit? I was asking. What did you say? You said that you have to build for a long term. Don't worry about exit. I still say that. <laughs> because... Look, uh, we invested in Policy Bazaar in 2008. We are still shareholders. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, 15 years. We invested in Zomato 2010. We are still there. Uh, okay, 13 years. And real value is created over a long time usually. And you have to be patient. So India needs uh, patient capital. And sir, uh, you, have, you built Infoage. You quit your job in 1999. In 1997, you launched Naukari. Yes. Right. So it was a large period of seven years of experimentation. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so I didn't want, I had worked five years in two multinational corporations. Yes. Uh, and I was pretty clear by then that uh, I didn't want a career rising up the ranks in large multinational corporations, you know, um, as a junior executive, middle management, senior yeah. management, you know. And over 25, 30 years, you know, sort of you uh, build your career. And... I had come to the realization that, uh, look, uh, I was chasing the wrong thing, you know. So, if my car is one foot longer than yours, I'm doing better than you. If my house has one more bedroom than yours, I'm doing better than you. If my house is in this neighborhood and not in the neighborhood where you're living, two kilometers away, I'm doing better than you. And so, I figured that, look, I cannot measure my success on those parameters. I've got to do something different. Uh, I want to be independent. I want. I, I, I wanted to be creative, so I quit my job in 1990. But I had no big idea. But I did. A, we did a bunch of small things. We did a salary survey. We did a trademarks database. We did teaching, training, writing, uh, whatever came my way in order to survive. And for seven years, uh, in hindsight, I would say I drifted. But you know, in that seven years of drift, I learned a lot. And a lot of that stuff that I learned in the seven years of drift was very useful when we launched Nokri. Right? So I'll give you a little example. Yeah. Um, because I was broke, no money, I took up a second job as a journalist in the Pioneer newspaper. I, I was to go there in the afternoons, I was the consulting editor of the career supplement. Okay. I would get a monthly check, and you know, that would be for personal expenses. And uh, the company was unable to pay me any salary. We were you know, barely breaking even. Yeah. And 
when I was there, the editor did a management buyout of the, of the newspaper. And I was on the editorial side. I was the only person with management experience. So he asked for my help. So I worked with him to help him buy out a newspaper. So there was a point in time when I had roughly 800 people reporting to me. I'd never had that kind of uh, team strength before. The largest team I'd ever had was seven, eight people, right? And I did that for two years and I learned a lot. I went to financial institutions and raised money for them, helped them. Uh, I, 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 there was no CFO, I did the CFO's job, right? So all of that, it taught me a lot. I learned journalism in this, in this, uh, while I was a consulting editor. I learned to write, I learned to write press releases. I learned, you know, uh, what gets printed, what doesn't get printed. Um, that's just one example. And this is from which year to which year? This is 96 to 2000, right? I was there. Uh, prior to that, I had been teaching at business schools in and around Delhi, right? Uh, and in order to teach, you had to speak in front of an audience. Yeah. I was a very nervous speaker before that. Uh, I couldn't do any public speaking. But on sheer practice, because I had to earn two and a half thousand rupees a month yeah. just to sort of survive. You were married then? Uh, yes, right? And... Uh, you know, uh, so, 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 you know, I learned to speak in public. I learned to, you know, I learned more management while teaching management than while studying management. <laughs> because you know, when you're teaching management, you're in front of an audience yeah. of 50 or 60, they're asking you questions, right? If you're yeah. studying management, you know, you can get away. Yeah. If prof doesn't pull you, pull you out and ask you a couple of questions, you're okay. You survive the class, right? Uh, so I studied management more during my teaching years than during my student years uh, as, as, at Ahmedabad. So I, I did many, many things. I think, I think drifting for seven years taught me a lot. And all of it came together afterwards. And the real company actually started getting built after 2000, right? When you... Well, no. So InfoEdge started in 1890. At that time, it was a partnership firm yeah. uh, between uh, myself and a uh, gentleman by the name of Kapil Dwarma. We started two firms in partnership. Uh, one was Indmark. It worked on trademark databases. And the other was InfoEdge. We did salary surveys. Around 1993, uh, Kapil and I decided to part company. Yeah. And he kept Indmark and I kept InfoEdge. Uh, in InfoEdge, you know, I did a whole bunch of things. Um, and we also did Nokri in 1997. So InfoEdge has a history that predates Nokri. Uh, small history but seven years of history, right? Uh, we launched Nokri in 97, and we bootstrapped it till, till the year 2000, which is when we were able to raise venture capital from ICICI Venture. And uh, that's when we began to invest in growth because we had the capital. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, we grew the company and went public in 2006. That's a short synopsis, but within that, of course, there were many ups and downs. So were there more near death moment after raising venture capital in the Nokri uh, era? So, yes, there were more. See, see, prior to raising venture capital, we had kept our costs very yeah. low, right? Uh, we had, you know, just running out of my house, yeah. one floor of my father's house. Um, so rent, you know, even though I skipped rent one month, I didn't, but if I had to, uh, you know, it, it was okay. Uh, I wasn't, often I wasn't taking a salary. Yeah. So in the first 10 years uh, of uh, being an entrepreneur from 1990 to 2000, uh, I didn't take a salary for approximately six years, uh, right? Uh, because uh, from 90 to 93, we weren't making money. I couldn't take a salary. From 97 to 2000, we were putting everything back in Nokri. And so I wasn't taking a salary. And that's when I was surviving as a journalist. And getting a salary from there, I was teaching, I was training, uh, doing whatever it took to survive, right? Uh, but always feeling knockery, you know, because I felt there could be a future here. Uh, and when we raised venture capital, so, I mean, there was frugal moments. There weren't near death moments because you had kept costs yeah. low. It is when you raise venture capital that you began to invest, you moved out of the house to a different office in Noida, you spent money on interiors, you hired people, uh, you, you know, and that is when uh, oh. the, the cost went up, yeah. right? Cost went up, but revenue took time to scale up. Yeah. So there was a point in time, I remember, when our, after we raised venture capital, and we'd done all this, uh, within two weeks of raising venture capital, the market went down. Yeah. But we got our money. The great dot-com bubble burst. Uh -huh, the the dot-com bubble burst, right? 
सो देर वॉज नो होप ऑफ गेटिंग एनी फर्दर फंडिंग जो था उसी से काम करना है वी हैड टू मेक टू विथ वॉट वी रेस्ड जिस विच वॉज सेवन पॉइंट थ्री करोर्स विच वॉज वन पॉइंट सेवन मिलियन डॉलर देन एक्सचेंज रूज फोर्टी रुपीज दैट टाइम सो वी मूव इन टू दिस न्यू ऑफिस इन नोएडा वी स्पेंड मनी इंटीरियर वी हायर पीपल सर्वर्स प्रोडक्ट पीपल मार्केटिंग पीपल सेल्स पीपल यू नो टेक्नोलॉजी पीपल सो खर्चे बढ़ गए आई रिकॉल देर वॉज अ पॉइंट इन टाइम वेन वी द सेल्स कलेक्शन एवरी मंथ वॉज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ अर सैलरी बिल इन अदर वर्ड सैलरी बिल वॉज फोर एक्स ऑफ आर सेल्स कलेक्शन एंड वी हैड सम सिक्सटीन मंथ्स ऑफ मनी लेफ्ट right uh, and that's when sort of we realized that you know we'll have to do something different which we did do we we you know prior to that we were selling by direct mail okay right uh, hitesh obroy who's this current ceo and md uh, he had joined that time as a head of sales and marketing and he said why don't we hire some sales people and see what happens so we hired four sales people in delhi okay as an experiment and said instead of selling direct mail we t- will continue to do you yeah. also go out and meet clients. meet prospective clients and when we did that we figured that in about 6 months time the average sales person was generating 50000 rupees of revenue and collections because we collect money in advance yeah and uska total kharcha 22000 rupees tha 22000 rupees which means that there's a 28000 rupees surplus he's making on his or her own cost and yeah. total kharcha means salary conveyance yeah. uh, you know commission mobile phone bill uh, depreciation on computer uh, office pay, current you know air conditioning overhead sab bada bolke right uh, and it doesn't cost you extra money to put up one more job or nokri so this 28000 rupees is all profit right and we said hey this is pretty cool we had found uh, what we call now uh, a repeatable profitable unit so if a company if a startup wants to scale profitably it has to find its repeatable profitable unit what is your repeatable profitable unit now in our case we said it's a sales person yeah in a qsr company it could be the the burger or it could be the outlet but you need a repeatable profitable unit every company that wants to scale profitably we had stumbled upon ours uh, and we said this is pretty cool let's just keep adding sales people until the last sales person does not break even on his or her okay. own, own cost and this 50000 rupees was headed north each month wo to chhemne mein tha 50000 rupees but har mahine bad raha tha yeah. and we just kept doing that so at the end of 2 years we had 240 sales people across i think 16 cities in india or 11 cities i forget in india uh, maybe 11 cities at the end of 2 years right uh and the company was breaking even so jab humne venture capital liya when we took venture capital we had a uh, revenue of 3 lakhs a month yes 36 lakhs a year when we broke even 2 years 3 years later we had 30x that which basically means you're doing 90 lakhs a month really, and you're breaking even yeah okay and that's when you realize that this is a big opportunity because the market is giving us growth we have made it happen this sales strategy worked this god and sell right and our sales strategy was simple we said which is the best b2b sales company in the market and we figured a really good b2b sales company is xerox right and xerox at that time was going through some difficult patches yeah so we said we want xerox like xerox people and that's what we did we hired two senior people both ex xerox and said just replicate a great b2b sales operation here hiring territory allocation systems processes training communication wo sab kiya unhone and did a great job of it and this is a journey to 10 cr of early revenue approach. from the year we raised money in april 2000 and so 2000 2001 we did uh, i think uh, uh, one one and a half crores okay up from 36 lakhs previous year so 36 lakhs to one and a half crores to two and a half crores and then 10 crores so dai se 10 ek saal mein hua 
and by the time you went from 2003 to 10 CR, by 2006 you were at 100 CR when when you went public. We were 84 CR in March. We are ending March uh, 2006. We went public in October, and in March 2007 we did uh, 147 CR. So I think 86 to 147 in one year. So it was slightly, yeah, I mean around 100. And and you never went back to any. Uh, e- either ICICI Ventures or any other venture capitalist back then Westbridge Sequoia marriage was starting to happen in India you know ki you need more money to stay m- private more longer uh, no we didn't want to stay private longer we wanted to go public because it was a dream that we will a public company a big company banenge. we will be independent and we will be world class and world scale out of India and uh, to do that uh, you your best independence from venture capital and PE agreements is profits. Is profit and is going public. Yeah. Because when you go public, all VCP agreements fall away. Yeah. That's the law. And so, so what did market say valuation ka yogi when you went public? 800 crore. Uh, about, yeah, about 800 crore. Mili. 8x to 10x of uh, your. About revenue. 8x. But you see, uh, it was really was being valued for growth. Yes. We also had scarcity premium. Yeah. That we were the only internet company out of India going public. Uh, internet, uh, you know, uh, public internet companies yes. were big in the US, NASDAQ and NYSE. They were big out of China. But there was n- very f- uh, few public internet companies out of India showing the kind of growth that we were doing. And therefore, we had scarcity value, scarcity premium. Um, you know, and uh, we got lucky. And And this profit also became the cash cow through which you later invested in Zomato, Policy Bazaar, and numerous other companies. Yes. Uh, so, the, so you know, when we wanted to go public, the there were a set of reasons that yes. I, we had. You know, we wanted to be independent. We wanted to get the VC and exit. We wanted the ESOP to have value. Yeah. We wanted to be in a different strategic space where we had our stock had currency for acquisitions and so on. Uh, however, the bankers told us, if you put these reasons, you will never get your SEBI permission. Yeah. Right? you got to put five standard reasons. Now, the truth is, you know, as a company going public, you're doing it for the first time, you're, you're novices. You listen to your bankers. Yeah. Right? In many, many things. So, we cut paste and said, these are five, you know, organic growth, inorganic growth, general corporate purposes, you know, as I said, these are five standard reasons. So, we are public. Now, the truth is we already profited, we had money in the bank. Uh, we didn't have a use for this money actually. Okay. Right? And every quarter the auditors would come and say use of IPO proceeds, zero. Yeah. So by the third time it happened, our board said, you know, what is going on? You guys better start using this money. So that's when we went out and we said, okay, inorganic growth, let's try and find something to buy. Okay. And we found there was nothing worthwhile to buy and uh, whatever there was was too expensive. Yeah. So we said investing in startups is also in organic growth. Right? And we began to invest in startups. Shuru uh, Shurume, the board had told me that, listen, you don't have an investment target. Uh, you don't have a date by which you have to invest okay. X amount of money. We are not a fund. So you should have a very high bar for quality and you should uh, invest slowly. Yeah. There's no jaldbazi mat karo. But up to 150 to 200 crores, you can invest, right? Over the next three to five years. That proceeds you had generated from the IPO, we were profitable also. Yeah. Right? Uh, there was internal accruals. So we began to invest. Uh, between 2007, when we made our first investment, yes. to 2012, we had invested about 200 crores in India. Into how many companies, if you remember? So I recall, it will be 6-8. Huh. Right? Very concentrated portfolio. Ha, I mean, you know, the, we didn't know those words then. Ki concentrated portfolio, you know, we didn't know any of that. We just said, if you find good startups, invest in. We thought we'd found eight good startups. Ek thi zamato, ek thi policy bazaar, our biggest ha. successes. But by 2012, one or two had blown up. Yeah. And by 2012, it was not clear that Zamato and policy bazaar would succeed. Yes. It was too early. So, and our shareholders and investors and analysts were getting worried that, you know, what is InfoEdge doing? Yeah. It is blowing up good money behind startups that won't work or may not work, you know. So I recall um, 
हमारे सी एफ ओ को इन्वेस्टर रिलेशन हेड को हितेश को इनफ इन्वेस्टर्स कमेंट्स है नो संजीव इज स्टूपिड इज अ फूल इज ब्लोइंग अप मनी हितेश अर्निंग द मनी संजीव इज ब्लोइंग इट अप यू नो ही गॉट लकी ही इज नॉट दैट स्मार्ट ही गॉट लकी इन नौकरी एंड एक बार ही इज नॉट लकी सेकेंड टाइम सो ही डजेंट रिली नो वट इज डूइंग एंड आई वुड से दैट एंड यू नो दिस फीडबैक वुड कम एंड नेचुरली वी ऑल गेट नर्वस राइट द बोर्ड गेट नर्वस सो we finally agreed in 2012 with the board i agreed that uh, we will not do any more new companies okay. for a while we, we could support the old companies if needed but hum aur nayi company nahi karenge so 2012 to 15 we did no new companies by 2015 two things had happened one is it had become clear that zomato and policy bazaar uh Are their market leaders would would give a good return yeah how much return we didn't know but you know pesa ban jayega ha so the f- the first portfolio has you know the first phase of investing has worked right uh and seems to be showing some results and second we had done a qip in 2014 and raised about 700 crores because to back 99 acres because we were up against housing so we were spending money yes to humne wo 100 million dollars i think we raised 700 i forget the exact amount and we announced that ye This is a a war chest for ninety nine acres. Ninety nine acres, and we had that money. Yeah. Around that time, uh, housing sort of imploded. Yeah. And we did not have use for the money which we had said we. Yeah. <laughs> so, pesa bhi tha. Uh, you know, the water policy will look like succeeding. Yes. Right, and market opportunity. Yeah. So 2015 we began to invest again in fresh startups. Okay. So 2015 and 2019 ke beech mein we invested in a second lot. Okay. Right? Uh Shop Kirana, Gramophone, Shipsy, uh, Adda 247, kai kai company thi. Us lot mein. Hmm. Right? But 2018 it became apparent to us that maybe in 2019 that Zomato and Policy was up would be huge successes beyond our what we imagined yeah we also realize that we may have a problem which is that if uh, we get a wild exit in the modern policy bazaar in a year in in one year yes. then infoage might end up becoming an nbfc because our financial income would exceed our operating income yeah uh now nbfc means uh, that if you if nokri wants to meet Uh, open a new sales office you might need rbi provision uh you know rbi ka return jayega har quarter har saal uh, nb we are not really in nbfc but we get classified as one yeah and frankly ek bar ab nbfc ban gaye so i am unaware of any process where you can unbecome an nbfc okay you know so we got worried and we said you know this investing activity is now getting very serious so we should separate it from the rest of the company and we should float an aif okay which is what we did in 2019 we floated an aif uh we called it info adventures and we committed uh 750 crores to it we said we said what is the amount we're investing every year 250 crore teen saal mein kitna karenge saare saal support humne uska aif ki application dal di sab hi cleared it we got an aif info and an associate company was the only okay lps at that stage 2020 mein uh covid happened yes uh complete lockdown march 24 onwards uh we didn't know what happened nokri sales growth billing growth in april june 2020 was minus 44% so everybody was nervous yeah. because hume kuch pata nahi tha kya hoga na koi antidote tha na vaccine tha na cure tha na kab lockdown khatam hoga kitna bada pandemic ho kisko malum nahi tha so there was a board call in, in which it was determined that do uh, aif hai uh 100 million nahi but as milega karenge okay so that just to be on safe side yeah. we pulled back 50 million sensible decision i mean i supported it uh, it was uh, the right thing to do uh, but we had done our planning and hiring everything on 100 million okay so then i asked the board in that call that listen uh while infoch can come at 50 million 
we still need 100 million in the fund. So can I go out and get it? Okay. They said, okay, go out and get it. Which is when we went to Temasek and we had a good relation with Temasek. We'd done work with them. They'd be anchored our last QIP. They'd come into Zawato. They'd come into yeah. Policy Bazaar. We knew them well. They knew us well. And we went to Temasek and we said, uh, would you like to put in 50 million? And uh, they said, yes. So then it became a fund which was 50-50 in Fuji and Temasek. Okay. Right. Since then, uh, we've got a total of four funds. Total commitment for 25 million, half from Temasek and half from... Uh, Profits of InfoEdge. From InfoEdge. And uh, the initial 100 mil that you had raised for 99 acres, that also got pulled into it or that got utilized? See, all money is fungible, right? Yes. Uh, the truth is, Nokri is making enough profit to support yes. the losses in uh, 99 acres, in uh, Jeevan Sati. Shiksha is near profit, sometimes yeah. profitable, sometimes break even, sometimes losses, but it's kind of flirting with profit. Even after that, we had enough money to invest in the fund. So the company currently has got about 3,400, 3, 3,500 crores, 3,400 crores, I think, of cash in the books. Okay. So whatever we want to invest in these funds, uh, info is more than enough. And, and then it, it took you like, relatively like 10 years from the day you started Nokri in 97 to list it, right? Uh, yes, nine years roughly. Nine, six years from our Series A, first round. And Series A was the only round we ever had. I often wonder why are not many startups replicating this playbook because 9 to 10 is a good period of time. Well, you see, uh, I grew up in a capital scarce environment. Yes. right? Uh, not from a business family. Uh, father was a doctor in the government. Yes. So it's not as if I had worked five years uh, in, uh, you know, in, in two companies. Yeah. It's not that, I, you know, the, the salaries in the 80s weren't what they are today. Yeah. yeah the know. average salary, uh, the average salary in my class at Ahmedabad uh, in 1989 was 3,800 rupees a month. Your first salary was 1,500, I, re I recall. That was 1984. Yes. Right? Uh, before before my MBA. Yeah. But uh, post-MBA, uh, you know, in my class, the average salary is uh, 3,800. You couldn't save a lot. Yes. Right, with, at those kind of salaries. So you had some money, but very little actually. You couldn't build a business out of it. Yeah. Right. Venture capital thani uh, stem. Loan milte nahi bank se. Because for service industry, you don't have collateral. Yeah. Uh, so really, you had to sort of, have you, with meager capital, somehow try and build a business, which means that you have to build on customer money. So this kind of frugality and fiscal discipline got ingrained in our system for the first 10 years. Right? So we became fundamentally, naturally frugal and capital efficient because there was no other way. Yes. Uh, what has happened in the last 13, 14 years since the global financial crisis in 2008 is that every time between 2008 and 2021, yeah. every time there was a problem, the Fed would print more money, yeah. which meant there was abundance of capital globally. And a fair bit found its way to India, whether public markets, private markets, wherever. Uh, companies were able to raise money. Uh, and very often as much money as they needed or sometimes even more money than they yeah. needed. Right? And therefore, you did not have to make a profit to survive. You just, you just had to raise more money to survive. Now that changed in 2022 or towards the end of 2021, yes. right? Companies now had to make a profit, have to make a profit. So there are several who are doing doing it, making good progress in that direction and some, some, some will have a problem. But the market has changed and shifted and that's life. So this kind of change you have, uh, I believe, seen the first time, right? Since InfoEdge got listed, he, the the access capital completely got dried up. Well, um, they say in my, I've now been an entrepreneur in 1990. Okay, so now 33 years. In those 33 years, this is the sixth or seventh time I have seen uh, either a slowdown or a recession. Yeah. Right. I think 1990 was a you know slowdown. Yes. Um, that is the year India was forced to liberalize because we didn't have enough money. Yeah. 
economy slowed down. 96 was the second slowdown. 2000 was a yeah. meltdown slowdown. Uh, 2008 was a yeah. global financial crisis. Then 2015. Then COVID in 2020. Yes. So there were six. There are six shocks that you know we have experienced as a company, whether before listing or after listing. So one thing we have learned. A couple of things actually. One is your business model, your products, your uh, should be so good and so robust and so resilient that they can withstand any slowdown. If you're be low, up ki cheez khadna chahenge, which means you got to be market leader, better than the rest. Uh, if there are four job sites uh, and your client comes down to me, I lunga, it should be yours. Okay. Right, because I don't have so many hiring. It should be yes. yours. So really focus on the product and the value prop. Uh, second is keep a lot of cash with you. So one thing that you've no- you would notice is that uh, post two thousand four five, we have always had a lot of cash in our books, in our balance sheet, in our bank, more than most investors analysts will say is required. Okay, but we do that. Because that's what gives you the ability and confidence to go through difficult periods. I'll give you an example. Those are beasts. Me, there was COVID. Yes. Two twenty twenty. There was COVID, and everybody's tense, right? And you don't want to sack people, right? Because this is the wrong time to sack people. They're yeah. your people. So as soon as they're tense about their lives and their life, you know, you can't be tense about livelihoods. Yeah. Could not get. They will not get another job that time. So you don't want to sack. Right, so I we spoke to the CFO and we asked him a simple question. Now, Nokri sales are down forty four percent. Why, why? Right, we don't know what's going to happen yeah. next six months, nine months, twelve months. And we asked the CFO if sales go down to zero, but we give zero increments and spend zero on marketing, and we don't, but we don't sack anybody. How long? Will we survive for? And I said you must honor our contracts. So I don't even want to renegotiate the rents down because this landlord company contract yeah. there. We should honor it, even though the government had put out a a law which said that listen, act of God, force majeure. You know, yes. we said we these are, are people whom we have who have trusted us. We we must we we must honor our commitment. And Chintan and his team did the math and said we can last three years. And that is what gave us the confidence to not sack anybody. Okay. So, they take out the we last three years, and let's see what happens. Uh, which I think was the right decision. That it's okay to sacrifice profits before you sacrifice people. And that kind of culture. In two thousand eight, we had done the same thing. Two thousand eight, nine, done the same thing. We had not gone for large scale sacking. Even though at that time, uh, with the global financial crisis, uh, there was. Uh, a fair bit of difficulty in the market. What I have noticed a common pattern uh, in your investing is, uh, Nokri became the first aggregator for jobs in India, right? And that's how you got so much pull from the market. Or up, कहते भी हो कि right? In invest in those categories based on consumer insights, where once you build a product, there's a natural pull from the market. You don't Jee. have to invest in customer acquisition. Jee. That's the last thing that you should do. Same happened in Zomato. They Jee. they did food menus. Yes. Same happened in policy bazaar. They aggregated yes. everything, insurance. But in 2023, in my opinion, there is nothing new which will happen on aggregation side because you don't know. You don't know. Uh, so it's not just aggregation. See, our strategy is not aggregation. Yeah. Our strategy is solve or unsolve problems. Okay, aggregation in these areas are one method yes. to solve or unsolve problems. और जो हमेशा हम बोलते हैं और सोचते हैं कि सक्सेसफुल बिजनेसेस आर बिल्ट ऑन डीप कस्टमर इनसाइट्स डीप कस्टमर इनसाइट्स अबाउट व्हाट अबाउट अनसॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स व्हेन द कस्टमर इज फेसिंग नाउ अनसॉल्व प्रॉब्लम इज वन सॉल्यूशन इज एग्रीगेशन बट दैट्स नॉट द ओनली सॉल्यूशन वेयर डू द आईडिया ऑफ नौकरी कम फ्रॉम 
in my last job, I was working in a company that was then called HMM. Now it's called GlaxoSmithKline. I was in consumer, I was in marketing. It's a consumer product company. And I was working on the brand Holics. I used to observe that when the office copy of Business India would come in, all my colleagues would read it from the back. And we used to sit in an open hall so I could observe. Yeah. Um, log the, log the, ek hall mein. So I saw that when Business India copy came, it would go from desk to desk and people would leave it from the back. Because there were 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads in the back of the magazine. And then they would start discussing, there's a job going here, what do you think? And, you know, and I found it interesting behavior. I didn't article this article. नौकरियों का इश्तेहार देख रहे हैं and they are actually not going to switch jobs because yes. you know if you wanted FMCG you wanted marketing which means head office which means Delhi right you wanted MNC yeah right uh, you were in the there were just two companies Nestle Nestle and HMM yeah. this is pre-liberalization yeah. the, you know none of these good companies had come yeah. Gurga are not developed then. So you were in the best job that you could be in because they would not hire from each other, these two companies. Right? And so they would not apply anywhere, but they would talk. Okay, so there was one insight that jobs are a high interest category of information. The second thing I observed was that because there were 8, 10 people who were all from the IMs in one place with FMCG, MNC marketing experience, this is a good headhunting pool of talent. And every week, one or two or three headhunters would call up and try and headhunt one or the other of my colleagues. And every time it's a different job in a different company and these jobs are not advertised in Business India or Times of India, you know, anywhere. So I figured that there are maybe hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand headhunters out there. Servicing maybe tens of thousands of clients with many times more number of jobs. And these jobs are not advertised. And jobs are a high interest category of information, which means that what appears in print is merely the tip of the iceberg. There's a massive market below the surface. So I concluded, you know, that there is something here. I don't know exactly what. This is 1990. There's no internet. There's no LAN. There's no computer every day. There's no laptops. There's no mobile phone. Nothing. There's no hair. Exactly what I do not know. Right? There was an insight. Yes. When I saw the internet for the first time in 97, I said, let's just take jobs from newspapers around the country and magazines and just put them on the net and see what happens. And that's how we launched Nokri. I used to get 29 newspapers and magazines from around the country uh, into our office and two data entry guys would just input the appointment ads in our own words, in our own format. Okay. And we'd upload it. No traffic again. Because jobs are a high interest. You know, now the jargon for it now is it became viral. Yes. You know, that jargon did not exist. Yeah. Right? But we got traffic. We got traffic, again, we began to charge for listings. And that's how we got a revenue model. Uh, and that's how the business was built. Customer insight. When I met Dipinder Goel for the first time, see, there were three or four restaurant listing sites, but yes. Zomato was then called Foodie Bay. So, Foodie Bay was the only one with all the menu cards. And I found that very useful. You were using it? Yes. Hitesh was using it. We talked. Hitesh said, look at it. I said, okay. Uh, my son was using it. We would discuss ki jana khane pe on the weekend after seeing the menu cards. So, I went to Network Solutions. I did a who is searching the domain name. And I found Dipinder Goel's name as admin contact. I did a deep search on Dipinder Goyal and I found some email ID somewhere. Okay. And I sent a cold email saying, are you the same Dipinder Goyal who's done food eBay? If so, well done. I am so and so. Can we talk? This is my mobile number. He called me back. I mean, after two, three days. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't, first he thought I was trying to send him an office. Or <laughs> but then he did a Google search on my name and he figured that yes. I, I probably want to talk about something else. He called me back. And uh, we met. And I first question I asked, was the idea can't say, to put the menu cards? Mm. Where do you get the idea from? And he said, I used to work in Bain Consulting in uh, Gurgaon. And uh, now Bain was this, uh, you know, maybe 50, 60 people worked there. Yeah. Uh, mostly young, 
mostly single, uh, many males, many living away from home. They come from different cities, different towns, which means घर से खाना नहीं मिलता, right? Working hours were long. You invariably had lunch and dinner in the office at work. Often at a cafeteria, which would not serve food, but you could get your own food and have it there. To make life easy for the uh, for the staff, the the admin team had collected some seventy or eighty menu cards from restaurants that will deliver there, right? Uh, the delivery menu cards and put them in a file, a couple of files. In, and kept those files in the cafeteria, and Dipinder would say, you know, 1 p.m. It's a long line to access these files, and you get one minute to look at it, and you quickly call up, place your order, and you come back after one hour when the food is delivered, and then you eat. Say, so, boss, I got work to do, deadlines to meet. Uh, you know, it's I'm hungry, I'm under stress, huge pain to do this whole process, complicated process. This is one weekend I came into office. And I scanned all these menu cards and put them up on my personal page on the office internet. And two days later, the IT truck guy came to me and said, "Man, what have you done? Why is ninety-five percent of internal traffic going to your page? What's going on?" He says, "Penny dropped. Uh, I had the customer insight that aggregation of menu cards has got value. Just as fifteen years ago, I had figured aggregation of jobs will have value, right?" The market gave a signal. The customer gave a signal. He was smart enough to observe it and say, "This me kuch hai." He began to go out on weekends um, and pick up menu cards. When he had eight hundred restaurants and menu cards, he launched fully way instant traffic. Okay, and that's how the model started. Customer insight. When you did the first two checks in Zomato. We we were actually solo for the first four rounds, yes. not first first four rounds. Uh, fifth round, my Sikoya came in. I remember Mohit coming in with a twenty or thirty mil check in the fifth round. Uh, I think twenty seven million. I'm not. I forget. Yeah. Of which nine we did and eighteen something like that. I forget. Okay. But but you you kept on believing in the company for a long period of of time. Uh, you know, um, I think uh, to be fair. Uh, We had the confidence of ignorance. Yes, it's not that we were particularly smart, uh, but you know, we were like, "Kardo, what's going on?" So I would not take credit for being very smart. I would say, you know, we got we were stupid and we were lucky. And the same uh, happened policy bazaar. So policy bazaar, uh, you know, we did. I think in the second round itself, see, the first round was large. We invested twenty crores. Uh, on a PowerPoint, okay. Before the product was launched, and therefore there's a big sum of money for us. So we became kind of nervous at this check size. See, uh, the amount of first check was four and a half crores. Yeah. Second check was thirteen crores. Third check was thirteen crores. Thirteen and a half crores. So we have three score given with these three rounds, mm. right? Uh, the fourth check was large in the model. For us, I mean, not large, but today's standards, uh, not large for large VC funds, yeah. but large for our balance sheet. Uh, so we'd gone in gradually, right? Uh, so we were more comfortable with, the, with 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 that exposure. Yes. Policy was our, you know, B scored first round. Uh, by the second round, we said, you know, get a co-investor. Yeah. And they got a co-investor. Okay, they had enough inbound interest, right? Uh, and we kept it, and we co-invested a couple of rounds, and then in, fundamentally, both the, these companies, uh, their requirements of capital became so large that it was a little big for our balance sheet, and that's when you know other investors came in with much larger checks in both these companies, but that worked. And and then you have followed the similar pattern across the portfolio, right? Not necessarily. I mean, um, we have not invested as much. In other companies, as we invested okay. in these companies, but see, you see, we did it. We staged it, right? Yes. As the company kept succeeding, we kept putting more and more money. But that was you are also calling you. That was your first innings as an in- investor, right? Yes. So, so back then, you have never, in today's terms, and target addressable market time, etc. I, I don't think 
you know, uh, we are not great believers in uh, figuring out time. We do it. Okay. We do it because, you know, karna, you know, we should do it. Yes. So, we do it. But personally, see, and I'll tell you why. When we were raising the Nokri yes. first round in the year 1999-2000, uh, bubble time, I didn't hire a banker and I didn't hire a lawyer. I did it up. Right? Uh, quite stupidly because... I wanted to save money, but it would have been helped if I had got a banker and a lawyer. But anyway, I went out alone. Now, the thing about a bubble is that, uh, you know, I met four investors, I got three term sheets. Oh, wow. Right? The fourth guy who declined the investment, um, at the end of my pitch, he said, listen, you're a, you pitch really well, you're a great salu, right? But I'm not investing. So I asked him, why not? He said, they go, what is the total size of the print advertising market in India for recruitment? So I didn't know. When I said, must be 3, 400 crores, 500 crores. I don't know. But you know, it's not that much. So he says, what is the price difference between the job listing and Nokri versus a print ad, let's say in Times India Ascent? I said, one is to 1,000, one is to yeah. 5,000. He says, then boss, if you take away all the jobs in the market, right, uh, you will shrink the market to three, four crores. Yeah. And therefore, if you're 100% share, <laughs> you will be a four crore company. <laughs> and therefore, I'm not investing. Yeah. He said, no. And when we submitted our business plan to ICICI, you know, that yes. was the plan. Deduka was, was leading ICICI. Uh, no, Jai Chanda. Okay. I submitted to them and the plan we had done said, we had, we were going to com complete that year 36 lakhs. I said four years out, we will do 12 crores. Okay. So, three lakh heavy, my nigga, a crore. Ho jaega. Ho crore. You know, wildest dreams. Yes. We, four years out, we were 84 crores. We had underestimated by 7x. Right? Right. For our own business. Yes. What I'm saying is that when new markets have been created, uh, when industry is being restructured, what you thought was TAM may not be the TAM. Right? So we focus on team, we focus on is there an unsolved problem. We focus on a very a very key thing. We have termed it natural traction. Does this app, this website, this offering, does it have natural traction? Now, what is natural traction? Natural traction is ki customer are log are they are um, using it more and more, and more people are coming without spending on advertising, which means aapko naturally aapka bad raha hai. Traffic, organic growth, you know, and that's when you know it's me kuch hai. So, but just a policy bazaar me, you cut a 20 CR check based on a PPT. Yeah, that is pre product, pre launch, pre the yeah. thing. So, right? there was no natural. So, no, no, I agree. Uh, so, that was a little bit of leap of faith. Yes. Right? Uspe kya tha ki, first of all, this, this team had experience in doing a similar product to the European market. Okay. Right? So, they knew the nuts and bolts of how to build a product. Yes. Second, see, Yashi sat across the table uh, with me right, in 2008 in, in, in my cabin in office and he said, I'm willing to bet you are paying 60% more for your car insurance than you need to. And I said, don't be daft. Right? I bought the insurance from a, the dealer when I bought the car and I knew it every year. It's a public sector company. Natural insurance. There is no way they are overcharging me. Right? I trust them. The public sector is a government. You know, they're different companies, a different way of pricing risk and understanding risk, and you would be surprised. So take out your insurance policy. So I carry yes. my insurance policy in my backpack. So I took it out. Right? And he took the details and he queried something online. Not his site, but some other database. Okay. And within 45 minutes, I think he was, he was querying the individual sites of all insurance companies. Right? And within 25 minutes, he had produced a spreadsheet which showed comparison between 8 or 10 uh, insurance companies, the same policy, same car, same policy, same model insurance. Right? Uh, and sure enough, uh, what I was paying for my insurance was 40% higher than the lowest quote. And he said, there is massive opacity and it's very difficult to compare 
across insurance companies for the same policy. And I said, look, if there's this kind of price difference for the same policy across insurance companies, so this thing has to succeed. Because we just felt this value prop is so powerful. Yeah. If it's 40% of the difference or 60% of the difference, then people will compare it. Hmm. They just don't know it. Right now, there's a difference. Right. The moment you go out there and you make it apparent, they'll all come. And that's what happened. So once, uh, you know, Zomato and Policy Bazaar listed, right? You would have seen more inbound from your board, from analysts. Ki your, this was your first batch of companies. Out of eight, two became deca- Decacons. Right? Uh, it's, it's very unnatural par law in venture capital. They would have still told you, ki, no, why can't we do more of this? Earlier they were saying, don't do more of this now. <laughs> they would be saying. No, no. So, look, our thesis has been validated. Yes. That, uh, you know, investing is now, see, in 12 or 4 businesses, Jobs, real estate, matrimony, and yes. education. Now it's got a fifth business investing. Yeah. So, yeah, business. Yeah. That is clearly established now. Right? Of course, we have to see what happens to the few uh, other companies. Yeah. They have to deliver. Uh, and uh, let's see. But but uh, you uh, you came in these companies in 2008. It, it took them around 13, 14 years to deliver to their outcomes. You have to be patient in India. If you look at uh, India, when strategic sale zyada hote nahi hai haan ji aur agar hote hain and you leave out flip card yes. they typically don't give you the kind of return yeah. that a vc investor would expect and hope for right company buyback does not give you the kind of money yeah so what's your exit or monetization and your exit therefore a best exit is a, a good ipo yeah right but then You know, when I spoke to Rakit Junior Wala, um, two, three years ago, COVID was in the time, and it was on Zoom. Yes. And he said, Sanjeev, well, he, you know, Sanjeev, may I ask you about long? I said, sure. And he said, you know, if you find a good company, you hold it forever. Right? You, have a, you must have the option to exit. It doesn't mean you have to exit. Okay. Now, I'm not saying we'll hold this forever. But all I'm saying is just because listed does not mean we have to exit. If you believe there's growth and for the value creation there, why should we not hold? And you don't have because any... Because our game is to create long-term value yes. for our shareholders. Right? And if companies are growing and are getting to profit, we should not sell just because they're listed. So you are willing to hold them maybe for four or five more years? I don't know. I can't put a number to it. Yeah. Maybe longer, maybe less. I don't know. And and you have that optionality because this is the the company's money. You you don't have any external LPs. That's the advantage. That is that correct. But you see, even in our AIF, even in our fund, yeah, uh, you know, our uh, life of fund is ten years. No, it's twelve plus two years. Okay, so it's a fourteen year fund. I mean, twelve plus two. Yes. So you can end up with a fourteen year fund. Right, which gives you a very long holding period, which means uh, you know you can afford to be very patient. Yes. So India, me as an investor, early stage investor, patience is really important. And you have never thought about making it a strategy of exiting partially early on, right? When there were so many backers, like when SoftBank came in. I'll explain to you. Uh, we have exited the macro a bit. Yeah. Right. Uh, when Ant Financial came in. Because Ant said we want a secondary, okay, a little bit. We are supporting the company. Likewise, in uh, Policy Bazaar, we exited a bit, right, uh, early on yes. for similar reasons. Support the company, but it was not uh, driven on uh, de-risking uh, your investment. Look, you always tempted. Yeah, you pass a meter, take it off the table, uh, and आगे जाके होगा क्या? You don't know. Right, uncertain. Unlisted company है. First one जाओगे. And uh, these are unprofitable by the time you are getting secondary offers. They have never been profitable. Yeah, right? still, still they are about to reach uh, yeah. that number. So you know what to hota hai the market. But then, if you see a future, uh, you know, you hang on. It's worked out well for us. So uh, I come from your school of thought that companies ko saw 200 crore rupee list karna chahiye. That that jab aap gaye the right. Aaj ki tarikh mein saw 300 ya 400 hoga right. It will become like maximum 500. But uh, Because the earlier liquidity that you create for your employees, right? They may not sell. Like you as a shareholder, 
can have option not to sell and you raised again Q from QIBs in 2014 but still we follow the american model of venture capital that we we keep on keeping the companies private till 5 10 billion dollar valuation i think india is not ready for it in my opinion um look ye to hum ab bol rahe hain haan ji there was no hindsight yeah. after you've seen what happened after 2022 yeah. yeah right but if the market had continued to head north it would have been a sound strategy yes. to stay private and keep on raising money. Yeah. Then you don't have to deal with so many investors and shareholders. Uh, you don't have to deal with the complexities of going public and having SEBI regulations, NSC, BSE yes. regulations. Right? It's more complex. Uh, but I don't know what. And, and secondly, you should only go public when your company is ready to go public, yeah. which means of a certain size and scale, certain profitability, and certain growth. Now, as a loss making company to go public, you better be sure that you're going to be making a profit in one or two years yeah. after you go public. No, pub, I, I don't think public markets are willing to tolerate losses for five years, seven years further. Right? Uh, and public markets want further growth. So ideally, you should be profitable and then go public. But even that's not the case, you should be getting to profit in a year or two okay. with clear visibility. And it should be obvious to the investors that this will Because Indian markets typically do not value loss making companies that, that much. That's our DNA, right? And I think uh, why I, I am conflicted here is a venture capital model is borrowed from America, uh, which is, and most of the money is American, at, at least at the growth stage, right? Which is keep the company as much private as possible. But where the final yardstick is, where will be measured is the Indian QIBs, Indian retail investors. So, so they both need, need to merge uh, somewhere. Even your uh, VC and PE investors, even if they're from overseas, they would need to exit sometimes. Yes. Their fund has got a finite life. Yeah. Uh, as an Indian company, what can your exit be? Uh, your best exit for a good company very often is an IPO. Not yeah. always, but very often. Uh, and IPO, you should be either profitable and growing or getting the profit monitor years and, and but still yes. growing. You can growth and profitability either now or within two years. And that's when you can go public. So you have to get your company in a place where it can go public for you to go public. What you don't want is, uh, you know, IPO kar diya. But uske baad, uh, you know, the company valuation tanks yes. and stays there. If you look at some of the companies that went public, including the water policy, yeah. some of the criticism is the valuation is now lower than the IPO price. Yeah. IPO or there was not much left for the retail investor on the table. That's not true because the growth is still coming. Okay. Right? Uh, the valuation of several of these companies corrected because market corrected. Yes, market corrected. Market corrected. Right? But if you look at uh, some of the results that you're delivering now, whether it's Paytm, whether it's Policy Bazaar, whether it's Zomato, I mean, it's looking like it's improving, you know, every quarter and perhaps they will live up to their promise. And so maybe a year from now, these questions will not be asked. Okay. Maybe, maybe. No, no. But, but you are still hopeful that companies can still go public in India at five to ten billion dollar of valuations in the in the future. Market. It depends on what the size, scale, profit of the company is. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can't go at a valuation which is completely irrational, and that's stupid of you to do that. Market won't take it, and if the market does take it, somehow you force it, the valuation will correct in the aftermarket, and that's not a good idea. So my one last question is uh, right. Uh, in your previous interviews, I observed right, uh, you come from a middle class background, father, doctor, right? You yourself had taken unconventional choices like choosing Stephens over IIT, right? You had the option of going IIM Calcutta to IIM Calcutta on the year zero after graduating, but you choose the three year uh, window, right? And you quit your job in 1990 without figuring out what to do next. You had some experiments in mind. Well, I had a couple of small experiments. Yes. There was no big idea. There was no big idea, uh, right? So I would say courage. Courage is a big quality that, uh, that I would say to, to take that. I'm not at all courageous. I'm, I'm very risk averse, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a, if you're a really good entrepreneur, yes. doesn't just look at opportunity and return. Yes. He also understands risk and how to manage risk. 
because you can be a successful entrepreneur for 10 years while looking at opportunity return, but you want to be successful 30, 40 years, yes. 50 years, you have to understand risk. And the market is booming. Nobody talks about risk. Yeah. People start talking about risk only when the market crashes. Yeah, like right now. And we have been through six sort of slowdowns. Yeah. So we have learned our lessons. So, so one attribute that you would say ki why InfoAge is successful because it's all always team founders that that you had this long term mindset and you were risk averse. I would say we are capital efficient. I would say we have fo- we we understand the consumer. I would say we have a great team and we are we try to be very good to our people. We understand that this company. मैंने नहीं बनाई है हितेश ने बनाई है हजार लोगों ने मिलकर बनाई है बहुत लोगों ने बनाई है सो यू कैनॉट बी सैकिंग दैम जस्ट बिकॉज कोविड आ गया है या जस्ट बिकॉज ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस आ गई है ये सबकी कंपनी है बट अगर आप अगर डी एन ए तो फाउंडर का ही आता है सर जो हजार लोग आए दे बिलीव द फाउंडर एंड द कंपनी डी एन ए बिकम्स पॉसिबली ट्रू यस पॉसिबली ट्रू बट आई वुड से ना दर कंपनी फाइव एंड हाफ थाउजेंड एम्प्लॉज it's not some of the founders loan anymore yeah it's about whole bunch of other people thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you thank you it's for been me. such a pleasure thank you